Hello, I'm John Gaska, UW Agronomy Department uh, Research Agronomist. I'm Daniel Smith, Southwest Regional Agronomist for the Nutrient Pest Management Program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today we're out here chatting about planting green into cover crops, John. What are some things that we should be considering for planter setup? Well, for planter setup in, in, in cover crops, we want to make sure that our planter is uh, well maintained and we're going to be able to get that seed in the ground. The, the, um, the goal is to get the seed in, a, in a, a nice seed bed with firm soil around it. And so we have to examine all the parts of the planter and uh, to be able to get that, that seed uh, firmly planted because we have one chance to get that seed in the ground planting. Absolutely. And you talked about forces on the planter when we were chatting here before we started. Mm -hmm. What are those forces? The forces on a planter, when we think about getting the seed in the ground, we have to have weight. We have to have weight down on the row units. We have a research plot planter here that we use at the uh, in the agronomy department for planting uh, mostly soybeans. But when we're looking at, at weight and, and balance issues in a planter, we are think about up forces and down forces. Up forces on a row unit, this could be any row unit on any planter, pushing up from the ground on this planter are the front uh, disc opener here, I'm sorry, the, the no-till disc, the disc opener here, and the closing wheels. So we have, we have up forces pushing up on that. We need to counteract that with weight going down. So the planter itself, the frame of the planter has to supply that weight to push that row unit down in order to open the furrow. That is accomplished through a weight transfer from the, the frame through the um, down pressure um, units, whatever you have. Some, some planters use springs. This is, this is your uh, pneumatic down pressure. That weight is transferred through there and then down into the row unit. John, how does that change throughout the planting season as say no-till conditions change, soil conditions change, or even as that rye gets bigger? We have to ad adapt and, and adjust our planter for every uh, planting scenario. Um, with tall green cover crops such as rye or in heavy residue like no-till corn stalks, um, we're going to be encountering a lot of resistance to that, that pressure going down. And also um, in the soil, soil conditions too, especially soil moisture. The way it changes is if we have a real soft soil, we have a lot of moisture and maybe um, a very thin cover crops, we're gonna be able to penetrate through there uh, with, with a minimal amount of weight to be able to get that furrow opened. When we talk about taller rye, um, a thick uh, stand of the rye, or uh, conditions um, of drought where there's uh, not a lot of moisture in the soil, we're gonna have a harder time opening that furrow and we're going to have to increase the weight of that um, of that down on on the row unit. What, another thing that could change that is the speed of planting. The faster we plant, the faster we travel while we're planting, the more weight we need on those row units to keep that to keep that row unit in the ground. The row units will tend to drift up out of the ground the faster we go. So we need to keep that in mind as we're as we're planting. Great, great. What are some other things that you're thinking about when you get the planter out of the shed for the first time and looking at before yep. we go out into the field? Sure, we need a good maintenance program on, on any planter. Um, need to read the owner's manual to um, set up the planter, but on the individual row units itself, we want to go through from front to back and inspect all the, all the components and make sure they're all working fine. In this particular case, in this, in this planter, we want to check on bearings and, um, and uh, fasteners on the no-till coulter in the front here. We want to also make sure that is aligned with oh, okay. the, um, the planter opening disc uh, behind it. Moving on to the planter disc here, we want to make sure these bearings are, are secure and, and are in good shape. We also want to follow the recommended uh, manufacturer's recommended um, clearances. So uh, on a double disc opener, There'll be a certain area of the two discs that will have to be touching in front here. We wanna make sure that we um, check the owner's manual again and make sure that that, that uh, spacing is, is uh, set right. Make sure these are secure and tight. And also to check the diameter of those uh, opening discs as that uh, planters use more and more the disc diameter um, decreases and eventually we'll have to change them. These don't, uh, don't stay as sharp. 
going to the rear. Again, same kind of thing, checking on the, the, uh, the bearings and um, the fasteners and such and make sure that, that that's all in good working order and that if there's any greasing that needs to be done uh, just to, to uh, go through that. You have a different type of double disc opener on this planter, John. What, what's the theory behind that? Yep, this, this uh, particular kind of uh, uh, double disc opener is uh, specifically designed for uh, planting green and in, in cover crops. It has a, a serrated edge similar to a, a, a saber, uh, a, a, I'm sorry, a saw. Um, it's called a saber tooth uh, disc opener. And uh, the idea is, is that these, uh, this, these discs will cut through um, heavier residue such as tall rye easier than just a flat a flat um, straight uh, disc. These two discs that are here are slightly different diameters and so the theory is that they spin at different speeds and then uh, pre uh, um, provide a cutting action to oh, cut okay. through the residue. That's the idea with those. What about um, no-till residue management systems. This planter has the blade on it, but doesn't have any trash mechanisms on it. What nope. are your thoughts on that? Right. This particular planter, I does not have a, a residue cleaning system. That's a, an option on, on some planters. Um, we're planting in 15 inch rows and we had some issues with getting the, the residue to move through between the row units. So we, we took them off of this one, but that is a, an excellent um, addition to uh, many planters is, is, a, is a, a, a unit in the front here that'll actually move some of the residue out of the way before the no-till coulter comes and before the, the opening discs go through. And that's a pretty common theme when we look at planters that are set up to plant green is that mechanism has been removed. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not all, always necessary, but it's nice to have that option, I guess. Right, exactly. And it depends on, your, on the situation and the scenario, the, the kind of cover crop you're in and, and the soil type too. Great. John, one more thing that's missing from your planter is the seed box. And this is set up for research, allows it, you to do a lot of different things with your team. But right. what should we be looking at for maintenance with the seed metering system? Yep. There's, there's, yeah, you're right, Dan. There, we did, um, we have a, a cone unit here for our plot planters, but we can adapt this to a, a standard seed um, hopper on here. Um, we'll, for proper, keeping proper uh, seeding populations, we always want to uh, make sure that the, whatever seeding mechan, whatever seed metering mechanism you have is um, well-maintained as well. Um, this particular planter uses a, a John Deere radial bean meter um, on, on the seed hopper. Um, you can have uh, planters that have pneumatic um, seed, op uh, seed metering systems too. We just want to, again, follow uh, owner's manual recommendations for maintenance and go through those and make sure that those are um, maintained and inspected every year. Great. Now the most popular topic. We seem like when we go to the trade shows, different mm -hmm. things, everybody's talking about closing wheels. What are your okay. thoughts on closing wheels, John? Yeah, again, closing wheels are really need to be customized to, to your, to your uh, particular farm and in situation. On this particular planter, I'm actually uh, on a, doing a long-term um, kind of anecdotal uh, evaluation of different kinds of, of um, uh, closing wheels. Um, and the middle four rows here, we're using a rubber, um, a standard rubber closing wheel that comes with the, generally comes with a planter, along with, on the other side is a spike tooth uh, closing wheel. For me and, and for our situation in planting corn stalks a lot and in, in cover crops, that seems to, seems to do a pretty good job. There are a myriad of options out there for closing wheels. We have these kind of concave um, uh, toothed, uh, uh, closing wheels here. Um, I've, I've brought some examples of, of a cast iron wheel that's, that's uh, called a finger till. It's supposed to do a little bit of tillage and such while, it, while it's closing the wheel. So there's a number of different options. I've also installed drag chains on this, on this planter. I found that if in really wet situations and with a lot of residue, if, if we absolutely can't get that furrow to close, um, we can at least drag some, some soil and such over the top of it to, to cover that seed a bit. But um, each, each uh, planter and each planting situation is going to be slightly different. Um, and uh, you want to tailor that, uh, the cloning wheels, to your particular farm. My advice is if you have a 16 row planter, don't buy 16 units of a new kind of closing wheel at once. Buy one or two, try them out, make sure that they work so you can exchange it if it doesn't work. It's great advice. When we take the planter out to the field, what are some things that we should be looking for 
um, setting wise to make sure that we are going to get proper seed placement and the row closed in that high rye residue environment. Yep. So the, the seed settings here, um, one, the important thing is to get off the tractor seat and, and see what, what happened. We need to put the planter in the ground on, on, a, on a John Deere or a unit that has parallel um, arms to hold the row unit to the frame. We need to make sure that those parallel arms are level with the ground. And then we want to drive in the field um, and then get off the tractor seat, walk back, um, dig up the seeds, see see where the where the residue is, see where the seed is, see make sure it's covered, and and then adjust uh, the depth accordingly. On on most planters, you can adjust the depth, and then you can also uh, adjust the amount of down pressure too. So um, this particular planter uses pneumatic down pressure. Again, it's transferring the weight of the planter to the row units. Those um, airbags can be adjusted with different pressures to um, to allow different amounts of down pressure. Um, we don't we need to use excess down pressure. Um, uh, we just need enough to get the seed in the ground. Great. Great, and John, you've got a little bit of a tip to hold up your closing wheels. To watch that seed go in the ground, you've attached a cable and a chain hook onto your planter. Can you demonstrate how that works? Sure, yep. In this particular, uh, this planter, I put a, a hook on each of the rows, and um, it's, a, it's a cable with a, a hook on it that's put in an eyelet onto the frame of the planter, and I'll release the, um, the pressure on the, uh, the, the down pressure on that, that row unit and, and lift it up. And then I can hook this up here. And what I can do is try planting, put the planter in the ground, have everything set, drive forward, and I can actually see how that how that um, uh, the row unit is, is creating that furrow, opening that up, and then I can see the depth of the seed before the the uh, um, closing wheels uh, go over that. Yeah, I think that's really neat. I've seen that a couple of different times. You can really make sure the seed placement's accurate in that standpoint. Yeah. We didn't cover starter fertilizer today. We're currently doing more research on starter fertilizer for planting corn green. Um, so there's more to that story to come, um, but it seems like it's a pretty common theme that starter fertilizer is incorporated in the system. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend that you always talk to your agronomist more about that right. particular fertility management strategy. Anything else you'd like to add, John? Right. Um, on the topic of starter fertilizer, we don't see a lot of um, um, effect of starters on, on, on soybeans, or just directly uh, N, P, and K. But a number of farmers are putting on micronutrients, they're putting on growth, uh, plant growth regulators. Um, you can also put um, inoculant, a rhizobia inoculant, in the furrow as well. This, this planter is equipped with an with a, um, uh, a in-furrow applicator and um, so we can put small amounts, one to two gallons of, of uh, a product or something in, into the furrow and um, to add to um, either the fertility or the, the plant uh, hormones or, or uh, a rhizobia there. Great, thanks John for taking the okay. time to chat with us today. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs>